Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast for me, your host, Imperial Dane. A one versus one awaits you on Minsk Pocket on Monday. Novice fights, of course, expect some novice stuff. Some people not quite so good at the game fighting. We shall be watching here 352nd Infantry Division, which is quite wrong since by 1944 or 45 it would have been fighting on the Western Front. It fought in Normandy. As an infantry division, the principal one will back the Americans. Later on, after Normandy, it was reformed into the 352nd Volksgrenadier Division. Still fought on the Western Front, so this is, in fact, not quite right. Instead, we'll just be referring to him as Friedrich of the 76th Infantry Division. Opposing him shall be Der Nachtmensch, or the Night Man, or Person, or Human, fighting for the Soviet Union's 101 Rifle Division. MG42 start here going on there from 352nd. Already we are noting something a bit odd. He's rushing Pioneer straight for the fuel point, but not to cone the connecting territory. Of course, you might have the MG42 do that, which is alright, but of course, still a bit tricky. And Grenadiers following up then. Alternating doctrines is Lightning War, Fair Strong Support, and Joint Operations. For the Soviets, we're seeing, well, pretty much the box standard stuff, so nothing interesting to report on there. <coughs> Points being secured here. Right and center approach, nothing in the west so far, another squad of conscripts arriving. Noting here that he's just rushing on, he has yet to connect his fuel point, yet he keeps on moving. Ahead, which makes it a bit sensitive to taking the fuel point if he's not going to connect it. That's basically a lot of lost fuel. So that's pretty silly there being perpetrated by Friedrich here. Second Grenadier Squad following up. MG42 left to cover this area, which is alright, but of course there's a huge gap right here where the pioneers are moving, and there's a conscript squad on the other side. Second squad of Grenadiers moving up. Also noting here that Friend 52nd is actually spreading out his troops so far rather thinly, which of course is only to the advantage of the Soviets if they actually hit him from the right spots. Which again, considering the spread that the Soviet player has, is going to be much more likely. <coughs> Special Rifle Command going up, looks like a second squad of combat engineers up for der Nachtmensch. Conscripting a far white path here, and by sheer luck, they actually managed to avoid the MG42. <coughs> we go, Pioneer spotted. Conscripts react, and they're going in for the other fuel point there. Nice harassment. Slow so reaction from Friedrich here. Point secured, special ride command almost done. Pioneer suffering a brutal fate. Not surprising. Friedrich here needs to retreat. And there we go, the MG-42 also found your actual what's going on here, but a bit too slow. The fuel point has been rendered neutral. Cut off going on there. Both Grenadier squads on the far west. Nothing supporting the center or the right flank. And looks like the Germans will retaliate by hitting the Soviet fuel point in return. And noting a second MG-42 out here for Friedrich. So two Grenadiers, two MG42s. <coughs> More of a stable, less offensive start for the Germans. But can do alright if you know how to use it. <coughs> Tagging up going on. Scout cover up for the Nachtmensch. Very little in actual engagements going on here on the map so far. Taking up done, point secured. All a bit quiet, there we go, company is in the scout car. We are ready for action. We have secured additional territory. Pioneers reporting on our opponents are. Scout car doing nothing, what are you doing, next bench? Get moving. Grenadiers reporting. <coughs> Counter attacking, counter grabbing. MG42 just being placed over here seems a bit silly. I suppose that's Friedrich for you. Scout car not doing much. Seems like both players are getting a bit passive. 
In particular, since Friedrich is getting rather on the defensive already with an MG42, which is pretty much just 240 manpower. He's stuffing away in a building far away in a corner, far away from the front lines. We'll take the single victory point. While losing everything else in the process, both players don't seem the awfully aggressive type. That's definitely going to hurt one of them. Grenadiers on the way. A third squad while they like to make a nice company is up. <coughs> Our forces increase. Sniper arriving from the Nachtmensch. Still no actual engagements. Pretty quiet stuff. Einsatzbereit. We are losing the sector. Doesn't help though that Friedrich here insists on continuing spending out his troops very thinly. Which in essence would allow the Soya player to actually do a lot of damage if the Nachmensch actually did something slightly aggressive and coordinated. But again he also seems to be a bit, you know, oh what to do, what to do. But looks like finally something has happened. Paulus went down, shot through the head. Sniper's hiding behind a large stack of munitions and other fun things. <coughs> Finally realizing he might be a good idea to get out of there. But still no real movement. Come on. Try to push. I mean, use your scout cover something like say scouting out. Granted, the Soviets had a slightly different interpretation of what scouting meant. Basically, a lot of their scouting forces tend to follow the concept, you know, if you attack, attack the enemy position, you break through their weak. Follow up. If they're not, well, then you're dead and the, your commander knows not to go there. That generally seems to have been the sort of concept of scouting a much more aggressive and also much more simplistic. Ready. We are ready. Scout, car waiting Scout car rushing out. Then he's pulling up behind cover. I'm getting the scout car already. But already here we are seeing one of the greater novice sins that is basically just sitting about with your hands under your ass. Doing nothing. Again, you should not have units standing back doing nothing. I mean, this guy could have done a lot, lot more, but instead, so far, he's had it done, do nothing at all. And now it's finally getting into some kind of combat, but likely without meaning to achieve much. I mean, could have done more against the MG, could have thrown away, possibly and destroyed it, leaving an MG42 for him to take, but instead, that did not happen. He only moved when he had to. And by Joe, if you're playing Company Hoos and only moving when you have to, you're doing something wrong. You should always be moving, you should always be attacking, you should always be doing. Something. So that's really a bad idea. And it looks like a squad has been lost. Some pioneers gave their lives in service of the fatherland. But yeah, the Soviet player really needs to get it together and actually launch a sensible assault. Otherwise, he's pretty much going to be handing over this fight to his opponents soon enough. And Friedrich here really should stop this habit with stuffing units into buildings to protect the points. Yes, it's nice and dandy, but so is killing the enemy and taking more territory. In particular, when you're isolating them so far from each other that basically the opponent then basically sets up enough unit, you're going to lose the unit itself because it can't retreat safely. I mean, this is really not sound strategically or tactically. And particularly if you're not going to upgrade the grenadiers with a light machine gun, this is pretty much just waiting to be killed and wasted. That's just really a bad idea. I cannot stress enough how badly thought out this is here by Friedrich. And he's upgrading now both scout cars with altered cannons. I mean, it's definitely not as bad as it used to be, but even then, I mean... Is it really necessary to upgrade both scout cars with altered cannons? Which is rather the argument I make and say well, it isn't. But apparently Friedrich here thinks, and is thus expending 140 minutes on that, so they say, you know, upgrading some of his troops with that machine guns or flamethrowers or perhaps laying down some mines. Basically a lot of wasted opportunities here. Support armor core going up. MG needs to move, getting hammered here by heavy mortar, which of course means guards motor doctrine. Whereas Friedrich here has not chosen a doctrine as of yet. Scout cars doing nothing, no pushing, no scouting, no anything. Again, passiveness is one of your worst enemies in Company of Heroes. If you're just sitting about doing nothing, you're losing. Or bound to lose. Simple as that. Support armor core up. 
we'll of course see what's going to be coming out of there. Going straight for the few, going to hit the vital points, that is good. Looks like the next bench is getting slightly more active. Setting up a fuel cache, that's good. Still might want to do something. But popping over to the Nachmensch. Well, I suppose could be trying to save up for the T 3485s. No, currently far off. <coughs> Anti tank grenade going off there in the scout car. Lovely, lovely. More blues engagement here, Grenadiers going straight in for the mortar, but apparently not quite expected that kind of opposition. And having not been upgraded with the light machine guns, they're rather lacking and thus forced to retreat. Also noting here, mines and actually been laid down, but the knack mentioned that is good. Good to see some mining going on. Mines are good. Combat engineers in trouble. Serious trouble. Looks like the conscripts might sort it out, but no, they stop off for some reason despite having Urad. Note here the Grenadiers are doing semi okay, but obviously could be doing better. All the interesting of course, question is why the Nachmens isn't lobbing a Molotov in earlier. Instead, he's losing a lot of conscripts, he's just hanging about out in the open. Ach, Viva. But there we go, mine went off, scout cut down. Or perhaps that was a mortar round that did the trick. And despite having a support armor core and sending system spending fuel on a half track. So fun there. Munitions cash growing up. Interesting, interesting. <coughs> Gonna do still hanging about there. MG there. So again, that's basically a bunch of resources that are not going to be seeing much frontline action. That certainly won't be able to help the rest of his army. All the in response, we do see the Flampans of Argen opening up here. Poor mortar crewmen. The light has gone aflame. Oh, the life, I was trying to say. <coughs> Your orders, comrade. Finally upgrading, looks like he has gone for the Lightning War Doctrine. He came with the Gewehr 43s. Wunderbar. Will he actually be using the rest of the Doctrine then, though? Will he be using relief infantry, tiger tanks, tactical movement, cannon and fogel strafing runs, or what? Mines going up, at least that's good. That's always commendable in a Monday Novice fight, seeing mines going up, and certainly Nachman seems to be a bit on top of that, which is good, which is a good indicator of there being something a bit more between his ears than a wet patch of cabbage. And a bunker up here, and he stuffs a machine gun in it instead of upgrading the bunker with a machine gun. Seems a bit wasteful, he could have had a command bunker here, or... Oh, it is a command bunker, then never mind. I think, anyways. That might be wrong. Pretty sure it is. Which I suppose is nice. Out of the way, ooh, rowing up. Molotovs here would be good. Molotovs at this awfully climbed up force. Of course, there's a mortar nearby. No Molotovs at all. And we actually see he's retreating. He's retreating despite already him almost got a one country squad. Having only lost one grenadier, he's retreating. Come on, man. Show some German steel. Flame for a half tech moving in or rolling in. Combat in is clear. Clearly. Trying to bait in the flame for a half tank into the mine, that's definitely a noble endeavor. You want the sniper? Something needs to be done here about this scout car though before it gets switched into two. And another push towards here, and he's sending in the most depleted squad. Although, of course, I suppose he wasn't expecting Friedrich here to consistently and insistingly place a squad here where it can't do anything to help the overall war effort. Getting awfully closer to the T-34 85s. And what's this? An Austin Flak Panzer. Also rather gives the impression here that 
Friedrich is apparently not thinking it is possible at all for his opponent to get any kind of armor because that would really prove to be a huge blind spot in his current force composition and certainly once these two T-3045s arrive, I mean, things are going to get painful. And there we go, mortar rounds, Molotov's going to escort very low on health. What, down to one man, Heinz fighting on, having lost hope and his commanding officer. And there we go, dead. So yeah, that was pretty much a Grenadier squad lost. Actually, we see the Flak Panzer rolling ahead. Squad at full strength. And there we go, scout car gone. Guards rifle squad arriving. There we go, Khan comes in for a very, very nasty surprise. They need to just get out of there. And a bit of action here. Garten for two versus the Flampants of Argen. Ostwing continues to send to conscripts on the left. And looks like the flamethrower half to actually focuses on the pioneers, giving the guard infantry time to deal with the flamethrower half track. And looks like they might be able to do it, although the losses will be high. There will be many men burned to death. We have lost the and there we go. Flampants of Argen kaput. And now he basically just needs to save up some manpower and he can call into the two T-3485s and unleash Soviet armored might upon the fascist's head. And again, currently this guy will be very, very vulnerable to it. Since all he has currently to stop it are Panzerfaust and a flak. 37 millimeter gun mounted on an anti-aircraft tank, which is not really going to stop the T-3045s. And certainly not before they take it out. Bunker going up there. Bunker remaining there. Fun, fun. How about pulling it back for repairs? Friedrich. How do you find that concept offensive? Molotovs and heavy mortar rounds, retreating grenadiers, retreating conscripts. And again, one gets the feeling that Friedrich doesn't quite I don't know, know what to do or care about it because he's getting extremely passive again. <coughs> and he's doing nothing about that Ostwind. And he's soon going to regret that because there we go, T-3045 is available. <coughs> Come on, man. There we go. Alley up. Two Soviet tanks. And he's actually advancing the Austrian with a damage engine further into enemy territory. He's going to regret that deeply and sincerely. There we go. Oh, it's been taking direct hits from the 85 in with a gun. Ultra adopted from a Soviet anti aircraft gun. Fun fact there. And. There we go. Ostwin down. Not exactly the largest obstacle. Although Denark Mensch needs to get some territory back, currently the so German player is holding the most of it. Grenadiers in its retreat! They're facing off against the T-3045, they have no chance, and there we go, retreat. Ruxuk. Panzer Grenadiers upgrade with their 43s, interesting move, not necessarily one I disagree with. Though of course question is can Friedrich keep him alive? There we go, one man down, need to retreat, need to retreat. I said retreat, not continue to hang about, getting shot at. Enemy 
And there we go, squad of Panzer Gunners Gear 43. So that's a lot of resources wasted right there by Friedrich. Rather sad. Popping over to Friedrich. Time for a mid game analysis. Count situation is not so good for the Germans. Lots of men just wasted. Vehicles wasted. And the Soviets on the offensive with two tanks, which currently Friedrich has nothing to really stop with the most immediate suggestion we're basically just getting either Panzer IV or some Stooks but considering the T-3045s and their pair I think the Stooks will work better due to the higher range higher rate of fire and the fact that they're cheaper so you can quicker get out a second one and with a pair of Stooks you could probably easily take out the T-3045s or at least put the fear of Krupp steel into them because that Panzer IV is simply going to get outmaneuvered brutally and outnumbered for that matter and thus out Gunned. So of course there's a considerably immediate problem there for the German player. Either that or he needs to get some packs out and otherwise set up a defensive front and that way he also needs to sort of you know decide more specifically what he wants to hold instead of trying to hold everything spreading out his troops so thinly that they're easily being taken up by his opponent which again is not really sensible in terms of strategy. In particular, not when it also means you have a front line up here but for some reason you're still sticking an MG42 miles away from it. Again, that's just waste of a unit. Waste of potential damage. So that's something he needs to work on. As for his current options, he seems to have already teched up. I would not necessarily recommend that when he's already gone Lightning War. I mean, he's likely going for a Panthers, of course. The question is, why not the bloody hell just wait for a Tiger tank when you've got the Doctrine? Slightly less range, yes, not so fast, but got more health, more frontal armor, and still got a pretty decent gun. And that might certainly have a better chance against the T-3585s. Also, if the T-3485s actually try to, try to ram, in which case it's going to have a much higher rate of survival than the Panther in terms of, you know, surviving the ramming. So that, of course, is another consideration right here. Otherwise, you know, he needs to use more of his doctrine. He might also want to save up resources for relief infantry. That way, apply some pressure to different places. And if he wants, he can actually stuff those into a building since they actually fight better in structures. And thus, you know could do a bit more better there. As for Mr. Nachman, she needs to focus up in T-3045, she needs to mob up here, here and otherwise you know push in towards his enemy base, just basically needs to be aggressive, he needs to stop you know dilly-dallying. So let us return to the fight, to the action, to the novicing. What do you need? Grenadiers versus a combat engineer squad. Easy win for the Grenadiers since the combat engine is not doing anything that aids their fighting. Grenadiers are conscripts in the center, give air free freeze, taking their toll on the unfortunate conscripts. Grenadiers in trouble. And T 3045s on the move. And that Grenadier squad needs to get out of there. Come on, Friedrich. Nope, another squad lost. And of course, in that sense, the T-44 is quite nice. More effective against infantry. And there we go, another squad of Grenadiers lost. I mean, now the Germans are suffering heavy losses. The unit preservation of Friedrich, clearly not the best already, is just really hurting him. And now that Nachmensch is finally getting aggressive, finally doing something offensive. About damn time too. And we are seeing the heavy panzer caught up. We're seeing the bunker here getting blasted. Though why the other T-34 is not supporting, or at least why he's not using self-repair. Oh, wait, looks like he, like he did. Good. Machine gun bunker here holding up the conscripts. And there we go, quick move towards the Panther, the Panzerkampfwagen 5. Rushed in from a nearby Panzer Division to provide support. And another Gunnadier squad running into the problem, this time Panzer Fart in the rear. Come on, retreat. 
Are you going to insist on waiting another squad here, Friedrich? Nope, this time he does seem to have gotten the idea and is retreating in time. The enemy is attempting to steal our sector. Also getting himself another Grenadier squad to replace some of the infantry losses. New unit has arrived. And there we go, Panther has arrived. Mark target would be a good job here, mark vehicle, increases of course the damage inflicted and a panther versus 2T45, the five should definitely do so that and actually he quickly pulls back, looks like he is not very confident despite you know the panther having the higher range and speed and of course because he's not supporting it I suppose There we go. Also noting here that Nakmet is actually splitting up his two tanks. They're still within supporting range of each other. There we go. T-34 coming on direct fire. Grenadiers marching on directly despite enemy squads close by. And of course the tanks. Grenadiers need to consider getting out of there before it's too late. And once more the Panther is left behind. And actually moves ahead, by this time the anti-tank grenade fails to do the deed and damage the engine. For which I'm sure the Panther crew is quite pleased. Any going for a Tiger would also have been more effective against enemy infantry. There we go, Panther back to base. Needs to look ahead. When set the pioneers are for some reason moving towards the west for harassment there. And now getting a pack. Interesting, interesting. Well, not really. Also got plenty of munitions for relief infantry, so use it. But now, of course, he's not got so much infantry track to use it with. Friedrich does need to pull his act together a bit. And again, Nachmensch getting passive, not doing anything at all, not taking points, or at least not making a great effort towards it, but just trying to apply some pressure until, of course, the opponent really reacts. But looks like finally something is happening once more. Of course, he might try and use the Stuka close air support in conjunction with, say, an assault and actually try that way to deal with the T 3045s, but he's already spending munitions on Panther, or Panther Fast instead. Taking heavy losses, another squad lost! Ach, Friedrich. You don't seem to like your men very much. Enemy forces are securing our territory. Enemy infantry has made contact! Two combat ready T-3045s. The territory is out of contact. That's it! Fully reinforced! And now getting a stook, that's something. There we go, on the move. T-34 moving straight into the line of fire of the pack. 40. For some reason, Act Tanks are out. And there we go, Panzer Fast Gun. It is need to retreat. Veterans one, he could try target weak point, he could try target weak point. Instead, why is the Panther moving out there then? Back there, oh dear. And there we go, T-45 5 went down, Panther rushes head straight into the line of grenading from the infantry. Not really well thought out of there, Friedrich. Stug arrives. And there we go, Mark Vehicle, well done, well done, although you already one of the T-34s is down, so he can't quite get down the volume of fire he had hoped for. 
And there we go, T-35 wasted. If I in there was a pack supporting the entire thing, it seemed like a bit of a silly assault. <coughs> but at the same time, I suppose he kept up his target of keeping the German player otherwise penned in. That's about it. Because clearly Friedrich is not going to hold back, he's just going to push forwards. We'll see some infantry clearly moving in. Guards infantry doing what they can. Buttoning up, continuing with the whole marked vehicle thing as well. And Panther Blitz creeping away. Not in a very good condition though, not in a very good condition at all. Another squad of grenadiers. Stand no sign of relief infantry. Oh, in fact, no sign of him actually utilizing his doctrine except for Gewehr 43s at all. Which rather begs the question why he went for it in the first place. And meanwhile, the Anak Major on the other hand has made good use of it. I think he's pretty much used everything there is in it. And he's called another pair of T 3485s. But it's laid down the will of Comrade Stalin upon the heads of the Germans. Popping back here to Dan Nachtmensch. Not really a good idea to leave the heavy mortar unguarded and exposed like that though. Looks like the Nak Mensch is getting ready to attack, which is good. He needs could always do just applying some pressure. They've opened up on us. We are losing supplies to the enemy. And there we go, Stuke spotted, Stuke flanked. Pack can't cover. If he's not paying attention to the pack, he probably should because that's eventually two pack. And there goes Stug wiped out. Pretty quickly done, in fact. T-34 quickly making their escape. Troops moving up to the right flank. Fine. No, he didn't even leave the building with it. He just got another one to move ahead for him. Oh, good lord. Good lord, good lord. Not good. Ooh, Sniper actually went down, no idea why he placed it right there. And he's going to need to retreat, but looks like they will die by Friedrichs, um, I don't know what. Panther receiving the vital repairs. Not much happening here, just need to retreat those pinned troops. We are taking heavy machine gun fire. And T-3045 moving in, of course the MD-42 pretty much okay, without anything to guard it with. Do you need us? And that MD-42 in the building I imagine is next. Squad force to retreat. Another T-35 called in, a pair of them. And there we go, Mark Vehicle, buttoning up perhaps. Moving the other T-34. Already though the Panther is down to half health. <coughs> Gonna killed. Low health all in all, and perhaps one more hit with Mark Vehicle on can do it. The enemy has killed another 
and there we go. <coughs> Mark Vehicle showing its power. I mean, it pretty much allows a single T3045 to take down a Panther with ease. And there we go. Game over. Friedrich has realized the fight is lost and is running for the hills. With the remainder of the 16th Infantry Division troops here he had here. Nachtmensch was victorious. Major problem for this fight was partly no unit preservation, but also basically inactivity, not pressuring their opponent, not trying to even figure out if their opponent actually had any troops there, but instead just assuming, oh well, he has some troops, I'll just be nice, you know, not attack. Don't do that. Some mining going on from the Nachtmensch, that was good, that was commendable to see. Doctor News definitely was better there with Nachtmensch. On the other hand, his opponent basically only used one ability out of five. Not really good at all. He didn't try to use unit abilities. Loss of units senselessly. And I question the idea of getting the panther when perhaps again, you know, he could just have gotten the tiger. So some definite issues there. And of course the question is also again, why even build this then? So there you go. Hope you enjoyed this match. Hope you learned a thing or two from it. If you did, why not subscribe to your friends? If you didn't, well, why not replay your own? Provide some feedback in the comments. This is Imperial Dane saying cheers.